It's upstairs. We need them. Yeah. Let's fucking do it. Dude. Let's do it. Episode 69 of From Everyone. Fuck yeah, dude. 69. <laughs> I've been waiting for that one. Uh, I'm here with Billy Smith. I'm learning from Billy Smith today. Uh, Billy Smith is the one-man army in Neutralized Existence. They got a new single out now uh, called The Dead Forget You Quickly. Yeah. And that shit bangs everywhere. Go stream it. Go listen to it. Billy, thanks for joining me today, my man. Thank you, dude. Thank you for having me. Uh, I want to start off today by going back to, yes, first meeting you. So I think it's an interesting story here because a lot of the people that are on here I've known for years, we've been working together for years, and you're someone that I feel like I met years ago. We've kind of gone our separate ways, and it's cool to reunite together. So, hell yeah, I met you at one of like the first shows that I was ever shooting. Yeah, and 100%. it was horribly an anxious time for me. Like it was just <laughs> like those co- first couple of shows I look back at is like I don't know why I kept doing it. And of course, I'm very happy that I did yeah, this moment. Dude, but those first shows were so anxious and nerve wracking, and like. I thought when I was getting to concerts at every concert, because every concert I'd been to that point was sold out. It was a good show. Yeah. And then when you start shooting, you start going to shows that I might not have gone to otherwise. Exactly. And a couple of them, you walk in and there's 10 people there. And it's like, brother, what the fuck is yeah. this? How am I supposed to work with this? So you were like a, a comfort blanket for me. And I think you probably really helped empower me to keep going. Of like, oh, there are cool people in this community. And if yeah. there's only 10 of them there, yeah. <laughs> one of them is probably cool and someone I get along with, my man. So I feel like I owe you a lot. And I'm yeah happy to be here and helping you promote Neutralized Existence and all the good shit you've been working on. Yeah, today. dude. Thank you for that appreciate uh, it <laughs> new singles out uh yes i believe you're the one man band you're the guy doing <laughs> everything yeah. Yeah. for this <laughs> i write and record everything i mean i have a partner his name's alex mm-hmm. um alex daranowski from other world recording hell yes um but yeah so he basically is my partner in the sense that he produces and engineers everything but Incredible. i do write and perform everything in the studio um but i would not be able to do any of the shit without him um but yeah, writing and doing everything is a lot, dude, it's I will nuts, admit. Dude. I think normally <laughs> bands come on here and they say, you know, my drummer does a lot of the writing and he sends ideas to us. Or that, yeah, my guitarist, is like there is someone who does a lot of the writing and sends it. I'm curious where the fuck you start a song, where it seems like you have yeah, so that's all, the interesting. Off, all the things at your fingertips. Yeah, where do you pick which one leads? So as of late, I've been teaching myself piano because... Interesting, okay. Yeah, so the reason that I started this project up again, like last year, because I released something in 2015 okay. when I was 18. And then I released something the next year. It was just a single called Consume. Um, But yeah, in like uh, 2023 when that started, I decided to like revamp this because I was getting really into Darko. Yes, and they bang me. Hell yeah, yes. dude. I just, just put loved... a new album that I haven't listened to yet, actually. Yeah, but me I neither. Need, I need to catch up on it. Everyone's been loving it. <laughs> but yeah, dude, I just, they were kind of, they were just, I think they only had their first album out at that point. Mm-hmm. Uh, Death Mask Part 1 or whatever. And um, I don't know, just all the different sounds and the weirdness and I don't know, just really made me feel like, I don't know, I wanted to dive back into being creative. And Mm -hmm. plus I was being in all these different bands and recording stuff for different people. And it's just, I wasn't ever doing something like for myself Mm -hmm. or writing like my own shit. And so I decided to go back to that. What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> I can relate to you on that, that we're always doing something for other people. And I think the podcast to me has been a similar venture of like, I love music videos and I love getting to create for other people. I think that it's really fun for me to take someone else's like vomit of words and convert that into like a structured idea. And I really enjoy that process. But the flip side is like, yeah, I've always been working under someone else's name. And so the podcast has been a really freeing time of like, no, this is mine. And yeah. there's been some pros and cons with that. But Well, it's awesome to fucking see, dude. Like, it seems like, you, you know, you get in a fan base and it's fucking awesome. Like, you know, to see when you were just starting <laughs> taking pictures to where you are now yes. is fucking amazing. Yeah, honestly. it's something 2016-ish, yeah. I think, is when we're talking. So, yeah, it's been a, a turbulent eight years. And, of course, Shit. with a, a huge wave in the middle of that yeah, for all of us. But uh, it's been great. But, yes, I was curious when you're like where the songwriting process starts. Oh, Oh, yeah. so you mentioned piano is where you're kind of starting to brainstorm. Is that where most of the songs are born from? No. So that's so that's what I was trying okay. to get at. I'm sorry. <laughs> Dude, the thoughts have a way of disappearing down here. Yeah. yeah. No worries so, at all. <clears throat> the, all my first stuff that I released was all on six string. Okay. And then when I heard Darko and their whole like really, really down tuned shit, I wanted to get an eight string, but all I could get at the time was a seven string. Okay. So at that time, like when I wrote the Dead Forget You Quickly, for example, that's on a six string. Um, but that just started with guitar and then I'll write the bass part and then I write drums and then I write vocals and then it kind of records in that order. But as of late, so I heard Sleep Token last year. Um, Unbelievable. Or this, yeah, yes. this year. And it just fucking blew my mind, dude. Mm-hmm. I think it was around when like, um, I don't know, the summoning had been out for like two months or something. 
So I was late to the fucking, I you know. I was so late. I'm yeah. like, when everyone loves something, I don't want to get into it because I <laughs> yeah, feel like they dude. hype it up so much that nothing I hear will live up to that hype. Dude. So there's to me of like, let the hype die down and then let me get into it on my own terms. And I've loved them, but I don't think I would have loved them if I got into them at that moment in time as well. Yeah. So my producer was trying to like tell me how great they were. And honestly, I was just like, no, this is dumb. <laughs> I don't like this. And yep. then I really listened to it. And it's just, first off. Like the one man band aspect because Sleep Token started is just Vessel and the drummer. Interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. So okay. he wrote and recorded all those guitar parts, all those like piano parts, singing parts, all that shit. And then two would just do the drums. And so when I found that out and then I really listened to it and like the emotion of it, mm -hmm. I just related so much to just, I don't know, you can feel how he's feeling through the song. Like, yeah, through the way that he writes songs and then the way he performs them. Yeah, I've never been able to perform live with this project, but... Um, <laughs> Have fun playing drums and guitar at the same time. Yeah, I look right? forward to seeing it. <laughs> I, was I was in that band one time, for a while, Cosmic Barn Destroyer, and I did drums and vocals, but... That's yeah, that's nasty, as yeah. yeah, that's as much as I can do like at one time. <laughs> you're gonna need more limbs if you're gonna try and go past that. Exactly. <laughs> Damn, uh, so much to unpack there. Yeah, I think Sleep Token is beautiful in the way that they are so expressive, and I think that's just something that has taken me by storm. And it's a weird like when I first heard the album, it was one of those albums I had to listen to five times. Are you talking about Take Me Back to You? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Before it like clicked for me, the first time I heard it, it was almost like. I'm interested by this, but I just, I can't figure out what the fuck is what, happening. Yeah, what is this? <laughs> and then slowly it's <laughs> like, oh, it's this like beautiful, I, I, it's probably a narrative that I just don't quite follow, but it just is this whole experience. It's a whole, I think, 12-ish songs of yeah. just a journey. Yeah. Uh, and I think what they did is brilliant of like creating a, a body of work and an era of singles and an era, and of course they've had their singles pop off, but the way that they have made all of us listen to all 12 songs, I think is really brilliant and yeah. interesting. Yeah, dude, I agree. And that's actually another thing that inspired me. So I did release that single back in February, mm -hmm. but I have a single coming up um, called Seeds. And then I have like three other songs that are really like emotional and sad. And I just wrote them like in a really depressed period. Sure. And that was all by myself as well. And so I think we're going to release like the singles so like the next four or five songs will be singles of the new songs and then ever since then alex has actually kind of been writing with me so he's actually become like my writing partner so awesome. then yeah so i was gonna release a whole new album but i think we're gonna release the singles to kind of just like get people interested because it seems like that's like the way to go nowadays mm -hmm. because when you release like an ep or an album i don't know it just seems like singles are more People's attention span. A hundred percent. We were talking before about clips, and I think <laughs> yeah. it's a similar thing for you, the podcast of like, I know people aren't going to watch the whole hour. I wish they would. I yeah. think that is the best way to consume this, but that's mathematically not how it works. More people have 30 seconds and have an hour of free time. <laughs> like, yeah. that's just very basic math. I'm no, no math major, but I think I can deduce that one pretty well. Yeah. Uh, and so I think, yeah, similarly with the album thing, it's like a, so a single is a much more digestible thing for people to click on. It's much easier for them to give you three minutes of their time than it is to invest 60 minutes. And I yeah. think inversely it's like when we are just finding out what the, like i think you're still finding out what the project is i think that's part of starting a project is like there's five or ten years of like figuring out like i'm going through my music videos like i feel like i'm just now figuring out what my voice is and what i want to do and i'm eight years into it and i'm probably in eight more years of we going dude i had no fucking clue what was happening back then well dude it's actually crazy that you bring that up because i was gonna basically like announce this on here hell yeah but um so the ep that i released in 2015 we've actually been uh remixing and remastering very cool and so since i haven't really come out with a single in a while because i've really really been working on these songs to have them sound like exactly the way i want them to because mm -hmm. at first this song didn't have synth and it didn't have piano and shit like that and mm -hmm. now it does and it has all these different things um i'm talking about seeds and uh the songs basically i think they're seeds worthless overdosing and sar bomb are the names of the songs um but yeah, so the EP that I did in 2015, which is fucking crazy, is like almost 10 years old, which is nuts. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so I put a lot of effort into it at that time, but I also didn't really know what I was doing. And then over the last, you know, eight years or so, I just, you know, kind of taught myself guitar, picked up different things from touring with different bands and all this different shit. And yeah, that's kind of how I just make the music. And, but yeah, so we're... Hopefully releasing the EP, like, you know, soon. Actually, this weekend, I'm going to finish retracking the bass. And then, yeah, I think 
You just gotta like mix, remix and master it, and then that'll be out. And yeah, it's kind of like crazy to see because you were talking about that. Like when I listen to these songs, it's like there's such like a, I don't know, youngness to it <laughs> and like naivety in certain ways. But then it's also sick to see like, holy shit, like, I don't know, some of those songs are really good. And like I yep. forgot about them, you know, we both did. And then we listened to them together and we were like, holy shit. We should probably like release this. Hundred percent. I feel the same thing as I look back at my first music videos. It's like I don't. I wouldn't release them today, right? I don't love them, but there are moments where I look at it and go, "Oh, that blossomed into this thing," and I had to go through this stage at a time I was proud of. In hindsight, uh, <laughs> take yeah. it or leave it. So that's exactly how he felt because I've been putting. So I put consume on Spotify mm -hmm. uh, after I put the Dead Forget You quickly on there, and afterwards I wanted to put the whole EP on there because you know I have it, but. He was like, he just wanted to make sure that it sounded the way that he wanted it to sound. Because mm -hmm. again, like with the years apart, like mm -hmm. he had things that he himself improved on and just like, yeah, I don't know. The fact that you brought that up definitely just gave me like nostalgia. Of that's exactly what I'm going through with my like old EP right now. There's yeah. something beautiful about that. And I think, I think the common artist thing is like delete your early catalog. And I've tried everything in my power to like make sure that catalog stays as intact as I can keep it. Cause it's like, I want you to know, I want you to see where I am now. Exactly. And I want you to also be able to look back and go, holy fuck, I could do what he's doing. Cause yeah. you can't, I think that's part of what, part of what I enjoy of being an artist is like, the better I can get, the more I can prove to people that like anyone can do this. And yeah. Look, look at my first music video. You could film that on your iPhone yesterday. Like, yeah, I, I promise. I, I was promise. playing guitar for four months when I recorded that album. That's incredible. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's dude. so. That is the the youthful exuberance. Of yeah, like, dude. I yeah. was sad. My first like big like relationship had mm -hmm. just ended, and like I was just all fucking like you know petty sad boy. Sure. <laughs> And so, yeah, I just turned it into music. Um, you'd been drumming then, for a while, though, correct? Oh, so hell guitar yeah, was like the, the new part, but you'd had like a musical foundation. That oh, was like yeah. You're just four so months I, into music. I've been playing drums since I was in fourth grade. So I think I was like eight years old. And then when I was 11, I started doing drum lessons and I learned the entire Bedlam and Goliath by the Mars Volta at that age. And then I kind of just stopped doing lessons <laughs> after that because. Sure. I don't know. Those songs are hard as shit to learn. And, yes. You know, when I got those down, it kind of gave me like, plus I was doing jazz band, which like, so I was learning jazz drumming mm -hmm. and also like, you know, the Mars Volta is just what the fuck. <laughs> Thomas Pridgen is amazing. And yeah, I looked up to him a lot. And Joey Jordison. It was a lot of Slipknot too. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, I started playing shows when I was, yeah, I think 11 or 12 years old. Uh, hell yes. Take me, <laughs> take me first to fourth grade when we're learning drums. Are you like self-taught? Is this academic learning? Like you're in school so, and someone puts percussion? It, so yeah, like we had to like pick an instrument or some shit. Yeah, yeah. I forget. Um, And so like I picked drums and then the teacher was basically like telling my parents how I actually had something with it. Because so I was kind of an obnoxious kid. <laughs> And so she was we like, all? That's, yeah. where, that's where metal comes in for all of us, I think. Yeah. And so then she was like, you know, he like has something with this, so you should invest in it type deal. And so then they Good bought this like shitty drum set at a, uh, what's it called, like a tag sale. And that's still the drum set that I use when I go on tour. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so it was kind of like I got a drum set very, very young. My parents have always been very supportive of the shit that I do, which that's is awesome. awesome. Yeah. Like my dad was the father that was in the minivan driving me to shows. And like the only way we were able to play at bars was if there was a parent present. Sure. And so my dad would be the parent for all of us type deal. And so, yeah, he really showed up and that was sick. That's um, incredible. Were they musical as well? Like I So they love musical theater. They don't like metal at all. Okay. Like, my mom yeah, really yeah. likes James Taylor and fucking, like, I don't know, Carol King, shit like that. Yep. And then my dad is into, like, I don't know, I would say, like, Credence and um, Blue Oyster Cult. And, but, yeah, so my uh, upbringing was more on, like, Led Zeppelin and, like, you know, classic rock, The Who and shit <laughs> like that. Um, um, it was my uncle that got me into metal, dude. I'm laughing. I grew up playing soccer. And so my, my parents my, listen to this. So shout out, mom. Hope you're having a great day. <laughs> uh, but my mom was always very supportive. They're always on the sidelines for all my games. But I'm laughing of like, if I, soccer was very easy for them to support. That's a very easy thing to sit on the sidelines. If I said, mom, I'm going to go play metal in a bar, <laughs> it would be a much tougher sell for them to go. So like power to your parents for like supporting that, investing in that. Because that isn't a 
an easy pot to continue to put money in or time in or energy love into where yeah yeah it's not what most parents would design for exactly. their 10 year old to be getting into yeah so it was really my uncle dude uh shout out tim smith love you dude <laughs> no but my uncle uh was in this band shallow ground okay. and they were like a pretty you know big band at mm-hmm. the time and um yeah, he really just got me into metal. I think the first metal band I ever heard was Slipknot and uh, Killswitch Engage. Okay. Yeah, I think it was like As Daylight Dies was the first album that I ever Hell got. Yeah. yeah. Hell yes. You said, okay, so fourth grade we get into music, and then uh, where you said start playing shows when you're like 10 or 11 years old, you said? Yeah, so the first show that I played <laughs> was kind of like not an official show. It okay. was just, um, what's it called? I played at the y- uh, camp... I forget what it's called, but it was like a YMCA camp thing. Very close to home. I worked at a YMCA camp for years. Yeah, and so we played a show there, and there was, I don't know, maybe like 30 people What genre of music were you playing at a oh, YMCA camp? My first my first band was called Maniac. We were a thrash metal band. Okay. And the what? guys in the band were three years older than me. So <laughs> what YMCA put on a thrash metal show? The one in Sellington. <laughs> we were the only metal band, though. Like, every other band... Um, it was just kind of like a showcase of like oh, I think like more okay. local kids like <laughs> you know I don't fucking know sure <laughs> but yeah me and my two friends we had this band and we just wanted to play out somewhere so that was the first thing that we did and I remember that it was when did Inglorious Bastards come out was that two thousand eight or nine couldn't tell you yeah but sorry. whatever year that okay. was I remember that right after the show we <laughs> went and saw that so um so you're. 10 years old at 2 p.m. playing thrash metal outside. I assume it's like an outdoor stage amphitheater type yep. deal. There, there used to be a video on YouTube of it because we went by Velocitus at the time. I don't know why. Okay. The singer picked the names. <laughs> but um, yeah, then we turned into Maniac. But yeah, we played For Whom the Bell Tolls and Seek and Destroy. And we just played two songs and that was it. But it was still like something, you know, I was performing in front of people. Do you remember the audience reaction? Yeah, they were like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> Why am I here? <laughs> I love, yeah, all the parents who would have taken their six-year-old yeah, like, let's dude, go yeah. support the community. Yeah, and, like, yeah. they had four lovely bands of, I don't know, 10-year-olds singing church music and all, yeah, the beautiful stuff that they That's were exactly. expecting. And then you all get up there and just ruin the fucking day. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> we blessed them with our thrash metal. <laughs> That rules. I just did a college show that actually had a similar thing where it was a national headliner and they had three student openers. Uh, and the first two openers were like one was like an acapella all female group. Second one is like a female rock and roll band. Third metal, like straight up metal headliner Flo Millie. So it was just Who this crazy like uh, female rap? rapper. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like like drill rap, I guess, equivalent. Like, yeah, real, real stuff. That's but, a, uh, you know, wide range of uh, acts. Yes. I know Suicide Boys, sometimes their lineup on their tours have the like best. Turnstile yeah. yep. and fucking all these different like awesome punk bands. Yes. So I don't know. I think that mixes. Well, sometimes when there's different, I mean, obviously not in the situation we're referring to, <laughs> yes. but when there's like a professional show and there's a bunch of different like acts, I don't know. I prefer that rather than everything being the same because then you're just yep. getting blistered with the same shit the whole time. Yes. The Suicide Boys, Boys model is really fascinating to me because I think with like Post Malone and Billie Eilish, we've seen like the mainstream slowly like leaking into our world and with yeah. Bring Me the Horizon and or whatever, who else? It's Sleep Token, I guess, now is like slowly bringing us the other way. And it's been interesting to watch these two worlds meet. And I think Suicide Boys is another person that's on the cutting edge of that. And it's fascinating of like, metal might be cool again. Like, not and maybe not in the next 10 years, but like whenever the Stones and the Who were like one and two or whatever the fuck, like it seems like there's a world where, yeah, Billie Eilish and Post Malone are paving the way well, yeah, for you, that to then be the next cyclical history. Yeah. I mean, I hope that people stop, stop looking up the members of Sleep Token. That's fucking <laughs> dumb. I hate when people do that, dude. Like, leave the mystery, mystery alive. I man. think I'm They're- in the complete opposite camp, so please explain it. I will happily argue against you. <laughs> because I respect Vessel. I'm not going to say his name, mm-hmm. but I respect him and what he's trying to do, especially mm-hmm. because of the one-man band thing as well. Yeah. You know? If I wanted to be anonymous in my project, I would ex- expect or, like, you know, appreciate if people would respect what I asked. Yes. And Sleep Token, like, Vessel has created this emotional universe that, in my opinion, I could be totally wrong mm-hmm. here, but I think, basically, he was, you know, doing this one group beforehand with this girl, and then it didn't work out for some reason. And then that's, you know, what most of their music is about his, like, heartbreak and, like, you know, mm-hmm. not having this person and, like, sleep is 
really, I think, is just like a symbol for other things, whether that be like, you know, a lost love or an addiction or some sure. shit like that. And I don't know, being someone who is still like <laughs> not over someone and still like, you know, has an addiction past and shit like that. Um, the fact that he wants, you know, to just be called Vessel and then members to just be two, three, and four. I mean, I don't know. I, pre- I think that people should just stop trying to... Because it's disrespectful in the sense that he's pouring his heart out. And I think the anonymous thing was because he didn't want, like, you know, his personal shit to be out there. Yes. And I don't know. I totally hear that. And I think the other leg of this that I love is that there are stories of them... Uh, before they were the sleep talk we know now and when they're there's a tour they did for opening for issues and a couple other uh, nightlife was on the tour it was a smaller tour uh, and it played toad's place in this area uh, and then a bunch of my <laughs> oh, friends told me the story i missed that god damn it. uh sleep talk was opening uh, and a bunch of my friends told me the story that at that time they were loading in and out all their own gear and they were doing it in the masks and they were going through exactly. anonymity to that degree yes i think my one counter argument here is like my my favorite part of batman is bruce wayne like, I love this idea that, like, it's this larger in life thing that we can then ground into a human that is accessible. And, of course, not real people in our, this scenario. But I think with the sleep token thing, my one, my one thing that I'm, I guess, hesitant to fully buy into the character is it's like, no, I want to know who you are. I want to know that you're flawed and I want to know that, like, you went through some shit and then you got up on stage and forgot about that. And there's something beautiful in that, like, catharsis that we can then experience. And, like, I think I like knowing that people are human and knowing that people are fallible then makes this, like this figure on stage even more magical of like it's it's crazy that you're homesick right now and still getting up here and giving us all of this and i think when you become a character you strip yourself of some of that like some of that growth that i find beautiful and organic so it's like he's he's telling a story and yes of course i'm not gonna be the one to be like demask them and on, but like please I, don't of course i'll respect <laughs> what they do and not read too much into the publishing credits of everything <laughs> but, well it says vessel most of the time i mean at least in the earlier shit yes uh i yeah i won't give people the roadmap there but unfortunately there are yeah places where it does not say vessel and because everything is tied to money and yeah. money money talks but uh i think yeah i think there is some part of me it's like i would love to see them talk about being Vessel and why they want to be Vessel. And I think that, like, I would buy into the character more if I had 1%. of Like, I don't... They can still wear the mask on stage and still be Vessel everywhere else, but I think if they gave one interview and said, I am Vessel because I I don't like all this attention. Well, he's told us why he's Vessel through the songs. Have you yes. gone into their back catalog at all? Not deep enough. Okay. I've so, heard a couple of the big ones, but yeah, not quite. Okay, so their first release was called One, and it had three songs. The okay. first song was called Thread the Needle, and that entire song is about sleep coming into being. And if you just listen to the words and really, like, like really dig deep, I mean, he is telling us every, all the questions that people have about the band, you can find just listening to their music if yeah. you really, really look into the lyrics. And, you know, another point I just thought of was you brought up Batman. Batman has Alfred. And Batman sure. also, I think he has, like, you know, like, who the fuck is Morgan Freeman's character? In the Christopher uh, Nolan version. I know version. exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, I'm drawing a um, on the name as well. But. F- Lucius Fox. There you go. So yeah. he has two people at least that yes. know both personas. Sure, sure. Vessel is, has gone to the length of it's just him and two. Like mm-hmm. at the beginning, it was just him and two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so since he was doing everything and just, I don't know. Because at first when I got into it, all I did was try to like just dig deep and find out more. And then I as just, do, yeah. I realized like, I don't know. I just respected the music because of yeah. how much it like touched me. Not to sound dumb or nothing, but yeah. Of course, yeah. I just connect with it a lot. So, yeah. and they've asked us not to look into it, I guess, informally. So, of course, yeah, I'm uh, also willing to respect that. But yes, I think that there is a part of me of like, if I could tie them to a person, I think I would love them even more than I could love the character. Um, but that's semantics. That's <laughs> I, I, who am I to fucking tell Sleep Token what to do? Exactly. Um, but anywho, uh, Neutralized Existence is also a band that we're chatting about today. Uh, things start on a piano, uh, or things, uh, I guess, yeah, back to the writing process. Oh, yeah. Here. Sorry. Uh, so, yes. Our, got derailed. Please. I love getting derailed. Yes. Let's go everywhere that the conversation <laughs> takes us. But, um, yeah, so songs idea. I guess my yeah question here is you mentioned that things generally start. Uh, I guess, yeah, I'm curious where the ideas start for you. Like, is this a, a conscious choice of what instrument to start on? Is it just whatever flows out of you first? Is, yes. I think drums is your, your home, so yeah, it makes so, sense that that start. But no, yeah. so that's the thing. So, so drums <clears throat> are like, it's just my DNA. Like, okay. I'm just a drummer at heart. I don't really know. I'm just, fu- like, I'm not trying to sound conceited at all, but that is the one thing that I excel, like, mm-hmm. you know, 
I'm, you know, I teach other people drums and that, that type of shit. But the thing is, is because I'm so trained in that and I know exactly what I'm going to be doing, mm-hmm. then I can just listen to what I think, what I'm going to be doing in my head. So I always start by writing the guitar because I'm a very percussive guitar player, meaning it's more about what my right hand is doing than what my left hand is doing. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you're not going to hear crazy sweeps in my music, <laughs> but you're definitely going to like hear very groovy, you know, rhythms and shit like that. Um, I mean, even at the end of The Dead Forget You Quickly, like we decided literally a week before we released it that we were going to add that whole electronic thing. And then I physically played that. The role. Um, yeah. And a lot of people, again, with the um, they don't play the electronic stuff or they use triggers with the of recordings yeah, yeah, yeah. we don't use triggers at all we just use i think like two or three mics with the bass drum mm-hmm. and you get the same effect i don't know i'm just always been against that type of shit no that has nothing to do with anything um but yeah so the writing process is always with the guitar and then lately it's been with the piano because i've started to sing so all of my music i'm either yelling or screaming mm-hmm. and <clears throat> with these next songs we're going to release it's probably going to be mostly screaming but uh, all the songs that we're writing now, since we're writing together, and it's, you know, really both of us now, which, you know, it's never been that. It's just always been me. Um, it's, uh, yeah, I'm just singing more, and uh, he is, you know, a fantastic musician, along with his wife, Heather. You're awesome. Um, <laughs> Has it been tough to, like, welcome someone else into the yes. fold? Well, not really, because he's all, he is the only person that's ever seen me write uh, for this project, mm-hmm. like, you know, for my first EP was with him in the same place. My single years ago was with him. This whole thing is going to be done with him. He's, like, um, basically, like, family. Like, my mother and his mother are best friends, you know, kind of deal. But, um, yeah, so he's just kind of someone that, like, I... If I was going to have anybody come in, the only pe- person that would make sense would be him. Mm-hmm. And so... It's just when we were in the studio and I would show him certain things, he started to like suggest things with the new songs and I was like loving it. And I was like, God damn, dude, like, you know, he's always been very hesitant to like start a project because, you know, he's an adult and he's got like, you know, responsibilities and shit. (laughs) And I don't. (laughs) But yeah, so he finally like said that he was down to do that. And that's, I don't think we're gonna be playing shows, but it's really like, it's up to productivity, definitely, when both of us are writing. And then also, like, you know, if he is working and he has an idea, he'll text me and tell me about it. And then another thing we've been doing with these singles is I'm going to be having a new symbol with every single single. Um, like, the symbol for the uh, Dead Forget You Quickly was the eyes and, like, that crown mm-hmm. thing that's in the corner. Um, and the next one, we already have the one for seeds figured out, which I don't know when I'm going to like post that, but cause we're also focusing on the re-release of that. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that artwork is already done. Like, I'm not going to fuck with any of that just cause like you were saying before, it's like a representation of like how far I've come, mm-hmm. but we also wanted it to like sound good enough to like be on the streaming services type deal. Um, but yeah, it, it has been weird, but it's also like, it's very helpful because I finally got an eight string. So we're finally like playing uh, <laughs> the really low shit, yep. either an E or a fucking, basically I use the same tuning that Sleep Token uses, which is like D sharp, G sharp, D sharp, G sharp, and then like the rest. Sure. <laughs> I don't know. I'm Fair not a guitarist, yeah, yeah. man. I just make sound. <laughs> <laughs> I'm barely there. I'm curious, like, the the one-man band aspect of this is fascinating, and I guess my other piece of this is, like, it is, it's cool that we're welcoming somebody else into the fold. Now, was one-man band founded originally from, like, necessity or from desire? Like, was it that you couldn't find bandmates who fit your vision, or was it, like, a... I think I'm, like, a control freak in some sense of, like, I, I like to be the one directing my videos. I think I... I haven't worked often with like a director of photography or someone else. And like, I think I work well in teams. I think I would do well in that, but I really like being able to do it all in house. I like this idea that it is 100% mine. Uh, were you motivated by the same like desire for a hundred percent or was it just, yeah, you couldn't find someone else who fit what you were wanting to do. It was a mix of like, so I had been in maniac for like years at that point, you know, I was playing shows since middle school 
And this was senior year of high school. And I was just so depressed. And I just wanted to, like, fucking kill myself. <laughs> and so what I did is I just turned that into the music. Um, and, okay, the exact question you asked was... Just, like, yeah, what motivated the one-man band thing? So, yeah, it was mainly because I couldn't find people that were good enough <laughs> or <laughs> wanted to do what I wanted to do. And I just had, like... Neutralized Existence has been different with every single release. It's just, mm -hmm. it's never the same and it's never going to be the same because it's whatever in that moment that I'm feeling mm -hmm. is what I'm doing. Um, so, yeah, it was mainly because I was just like, you know, fuck this. I was sad. I was depressed. I didn't want to deal with anybody else. Sure. But I, so, yeah, I was like isolating myself. Like I said, I had just gotten out of like a relationship and me and her had the same friends. So then, like, I didn't have any friends either, which fucking sucked. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, I just kind of, you know, reclused and hermited in my basement. And I would go to school and shit because it was senior year of high school. Mm -hmm. But then I would just come home and write and write and write. Dude, I wrote so many songs for that first album or EP. How many are we talking? <sighs> like 27. <laughs> <laughs> That's a couple. Yeah. That's more than enough for an album for sure. Yeah, there was five that <laughs> we broke it down to. But, dude, some of the songs are stupid as hell, you know? And some of them are, like, 17 seconds because I was kind of into, like, Napalm Death and some grindcore shit. Okay. Yeah. Um, just edgelord, yeah, how short can we make a song? Just for the yeah, sake dude. of making a song short, yeah. Yeah, like, Knock Loose's <laughs> album that they just came out with, they mm -hmm. have this song, Moss Covers All. It's mm -hmm. just fucking killer, and it's, yep. like, 47 seconds long. Yep. Which also is probably, like, the streaming meta for the moment, right? In the same context that, like, people don't want to sign up for an hour-length album or a four-minute song. Like, I think the days of the seven-and-a-half-minute song are largely gone. Sleep Token being the one exception there. And, like, and Periphery. Sure. sure, they, sure, will, sure. they will always have a song over ten minutes on every album. Sure. I would argue Periphery is, like, music for music nerds, though. But, like, oh, they fuck almost, yeah, like, dude. fall into a different category. Oh, yeah, of, like, where I think Sleep Token is digestible enough to the popu like the larger population that's they've blown bizarre up. They've, for like, them to have long songs. Yeah, They've blown up to a point where I can't even fucking, like, understand it, yeah. to be honest. I guess just to be clear, I'm also, I love the music nerds. I also love those long songs, but, like, I think that it's, like, a different product than some of the other bands. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. So I'll definitely agree with that, that, like, most people are fucking dumb. <laughs> and, like... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. No, but um, it's mainly just people's attention spans sure. and have just gone to shit. I mean, even mine sucks. But <laughs> you know, it's funny. The again, this is a horrible ta or random tangent. Uh, remember that video, Charlie bit my finger. That like classic. Charlie OG, bit you bit my finger. The OG, or that video is like four minutes long. And I remember in my head... Like, we only remember like four seconds four of seconds. it. Holy and in my, fuck, It dude. popped up on my feed as an example of the short attention span. Of That's like, crazy. If that video comes out now, it doesn't go viral, right? Like it, they would have to cut it down to the 15 seconds that we all remember. Because the whole thing is so long. Like not the four minutes is so long, but like too long to go viral. But at that time, at, in our attention span, in the cultural climate, in the content climate of the time, like we were happy to sit through that and invest it. We all loved it. Like everyone knows that video. Everyone in our generation is aware of Charlie and they're probably grown adults. They're probably older than we are for all I know. I wonder but how like, his fingers did. <laughs> it's wor literally worth its weight in gold at this point. So yeah. he's doing okay with it. Uh, but yeah, it is a fascinating thing of like, yes, as attention spans get shorter and I think I like, I try not to buy into that too much because it feels like it feels short-sighted to critique a whole generation of humans, right? Like I don't think it's uh, getting, No, I'll definitely do that. I, I push back a little because I don't think it's okay, worth... No, like, that was just a joke. <laughs> I wasn't being 100% serious. <laughs> there is a grain of truth to it, but I think that like the 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 attention span getting shorter is like us wanting to like get the thing quicker and realize it's we can It's instant gratification. Quicker. It's yes. the same thing as drugs, my man. 100%, yeah. So like ever since it's technology, sure. it has literally like seeped its way into the way that we live our lives. I mean, you know, even small things that people don't think about, job applications... Sure. When do you ever fucking fill out a piece of paper anymore? Now it's all online. Everything is just online, online, online. And then when you're online, it's constant advertisements and yes. advertisements of these little things. And I just feel like it, we've gone from a smart, like, thinking population to the population of what can get me the most views? What can I, sure. How can I monetize this? How can I do this? And then, like... I don't know. There's no more just creation for the sake of just creation or like, you know, there is. But mm -hmm. I'm just saying like at a, at a mass kind of scale, I mean, wouldn't you agree that people are just kind of going around trying to see how they can benefit from a situation rather than just living their life? I think so. I think the one I wonder if podcasting is like one example of the counter of this where like TikTok oh, has popped yeah. off. But I think in like 
the context agree. of these like three hour forum conversations, like that didn't exist 10 years no. ago. Like news shows were that, and those were 20 minutes, 40 minutes. And exactly. like, I, I assume that those views are going down and like definitely the views on the six second clips are skyrocketing, but like there is also this resurgence. And for me, that's what I consume a lot of it are these like three or four hour epics of conversations. Yeah. And I like, watch a lot of comedy stuff. And, 100%. Yeah. yeah. And I think so that, that is that. Uh, an interesting thing of like, we, we talk a lot about how the attention span is decreasing. And I think that's true, but I think that has left a lot of people going like, I don't want six seconds. I but need see, something with more the, substance. Yeah. So, I mean, so you have people like you and me who I like that. Mm -hmm. And there's other people that are starting to come around to that, which is sure. great. But it's like, I mean, I don't know. Another thing is like, as ridiculous as this sounds, I feel like the Tom Brady roast got a bunch of people like... Interesting. into watching like yeah, yeah. all these different comedians and yes. shit because yeah, yeah, they yeah. found out through all of them uh, mm -hmm. through that thing all the tony hedge clothes yeah the exactly in the world. so yeah, even yeah. me i like just got into him through and that to tony yeah oh, welcome to the fold brother yeah dude <laughs> yes. like and so i don't know as even though i'm one of them i feel mm -hmm. like that's something that like i don't even know what the fuck i'm talking about I think this, uh, I, I hate this phrasing, but I think that like we always talk about history as a circular. Uh, and I've heard people say that time is a flat circle. And it's one of those sentences that I, I hate because I don't know what it means, but I love saying it because <laughs> it's something like somehow like itches my brain well. But I think that's a good example of it. Of, like, like there's patterns in history. There is that are. What you and, mean, I, like and I think as content gets shorter, it creates this need for long form content. And we end up with this balance. And in a couple of years, we'll be right back to 30 minute TV shows again. And I think, yeah. Like, and I think the pandemic probably yes. fucking contributed to that too. Because, 100%. but, I think contributed to the whole getting away from the short attention span because mm -hmm. people had so much time. Then that's where the podcast really, really blew up. Hundred percent, yes. All that shit. Yeah, I think it's fascinating to watch, and I'm, I, I think as content creators, all we can do is try and find our place in the market. And so, to some degree, it's like we can't just put out six second clips because that's what it has to be. And I think again, in the context of the podcast, to me, it's like people aren't going to watch the whole hour. I know that. So my job is to put out the one minute and hope that it pulls some people into the full hour. On the flip side there, it's like, I'm not putting out clips of like, I should just clip one sentence out of context and have you say like, to me, anytime someone talks about sleep token, I should clip the like the least flattering sentence that they said and have you go, oh, sleep token's bad and just post, <laughs> post those four words. And it's like, in terms of views, that would be the best, right? If I, if I clip that soundbite that I just said, that will do better than any clip I have. I but know. Like, isn't that my, sad? Kind of. But I think we like salacious stuff. Like I am. Uh, okay. Yes. I, I can't. I, that is a human nature that I can't fight against. So I think our job is then to figure out where do we fall in that of like, okay, I'm not going to use that clip. But I also understand that like I can't just post the hour and hope it's enough. And so my job has to be to find, yeah, the 30 seconds or a minute that like appease me as feeling like whole and inclusive and not. Yeah. Not only sugar. <laughs> like There has to be some substance mixed in with this thing. Yeah. I mean, the. I don't know. Like, I totally get that, but I've also, I don't think I've played to that because mm -hmm. with my songs that I write, I mean, yeah. they're kind of, you just, you got to listen to the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Like, it's an experience in itself. Yes. Because some of the parts are, you know, a little simple guitar-wise because, you know, I'm not like a fucking Yngwie Malmsteen over here. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so if you, like, I've tried to clip the song that I have, and I just mm -hmm. feel like it does it so much better justice to listen to the whole thing. Like, Definitely. after that three and a half minutes of just nonstop blistering metal, you mm -hmm. have, like, a minute and a half of just electronic chill music. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I feel like you're not going to get that same impact that the end has without having that whole beginning. Definitely. I think this is where, in the context of comedy, this is where the crowd work clips pop up, though, right? Hell it's the yeah. idea of, like, we can't shorten our special. We want our special to be this hour, so what can we do in supplement of that that is smaller? And so I think for you guys, it's, like, it's guitar playthroughs. It's clips. It's drum stuff. It's showing just a double pedal part from the chorus or whatever is, like, cool to you. And it's finding, like, I agree that clipping a song into 30 seconds is is not right. Like, we don't watch five minutes of a movie. Like, that's just not how that is consumed. I love movies, but, but yeah. I'm so not a movie person, which is so <laughs> bizarre that I'm in a camera world and just yeah well hey dude it. you're fucking uh, you do a lot like yes, you produce yeah, a lot of yeah. things meaning like you know whether it be the music videos or the podcast sure. or whatever yeah um I, I would say my output is not as much as you so i do have more time to watch <laughs> movies fair enough i think we also all draw inspiration from different places and i think i've been inspired like and i listen to a lot of comedy stuff and i think that is an inspiration to me in the way that like comics talk about yeah their rise has been very similar to how i feel like my rises of this process of like sometimes people care and sometimes you don't and it's never the things you think people are going to care about or not care about i mean it seems like when i put out the single i'm not gonna lie i thought it was gonna 
get more attention than yep. it did, which kind of fucking sucked. But then As I realized, does, yeah. like, am I releasing this for me or mm -hmm. am I releasing this for someone else? And, like, originally it started out as a tribute yeah. to my grandfather because mm -hmm. he had just died. Um, so it was also, like, a cynical way. as like the dead forget you quickly as in, like, you know, stop mourning someone because they're not going to be fucking thinking of you. I know that sounds fucked up, but it was, like, mm -hmm. my way of dealing with it. Sure. Um, and so, yeah, when I put it out and it didn't, like, you know do as much as I thought it would do mm -hmm. I was like you know a little disappointed but I started to realize that I gotta release stuff the way I wanna release it because that was another thing is I was starting to be like oh well now I have to release the next single the next single and then I realized like these songs aren't gonna be the way that they need to be if mm -hmm. I rush all this shit yes yeah. yeah and I think even if if we play that game if we play the game of what do people want even if we win that game, we I don't, don't know. End That's up the fulfilled. thing. I never know what people fucking want. Fair dude. enough. It's but definitely not what my music <laughs> is. But <laughs> fair enough. But like, if you uh, the I don't know, you're getting like into the covers and all those things. I've been. I think that's a brilliant way to like market and advertise yourself as a musician. And then oh, people, my drum covers but, and yes, shit. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. yeah, dude. So those do extremely well. <laughs> and then the shorts yes. of those do even better. Yep. Because like again, we we're just talking about that. But so that's been a great way to get people into. Like, you know, everyone knows that I'm a drummer if mm -hmm. they know me. Um, and then the solo project is really just, I mean, yeah, like I said, it's never going to be like crazy awesome. The drums are always going to be like, you know, excelling. But mm -hmm. the other music is really just me expressing myself because there's a lot of things that I have gone through and have not gotten over. And yeah. I just need to get them out. Yep. Musically. But I think that's the only way to find success in this thing. And what I what I think I'm getting at is I've heard people talk that like, uh, the, you know, imposter syndrome is a word we love to talk about. And I, I, I go back and forth on it. But I think the gist there is that like it's this idea that we don't feel comfortable, that we don't feel like we've earned what we have. We don't feel like we deserve to put out the art or whatever. And my thinking there or what I've heard people argue is that like if this goes on long enough, you can end up at the top of the world. You can end up next to Taylor Swift and still not feel satisfied. And it's like if if that's where that leads you, then don't go down that road. And exactly. it's about finding the road where it's like, what is fulfilling to me? And even if I fail, I'd rather fail and be fulfilled than be Taylor Swift and be depressed and miserable and yeah. like horrified by the life I've created. And so to me, it's like, I'd almost rather put out something that gets no views because it's like, at least it's what I want it to do. At least exactly. there's no question that like, no one can argue that I'm doing this for any other reason other than because I wanted to do it. So yeah, that's actually another reason I even wore this eraser head shirt yeah. because you know, you know, David Lynch, right? Uh, I don't know if I do actually. David Lynch is a filmmaker. Okay. Um, he made Eraserhead, Blue Velvet, Mulholland Drive, okay. Lost Highway. You've ever seen any of those movies? I don't think I have. I'm he sorry. made the first Dune too, the one that was really shitty. Um, <laughs> I, sorry, I dude. haven't seen the new one either. I'm sorry. <laughs> what? Okay. I, anyway, oh yeah, you're not a movie person. It's shocking Fuck. how unaware I am. Of dude, this world. are you yeah. kidding me? You yeah. mentioned like two things as I was walking <laughs> up, and I was like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" <laughs> Fair I'm enough, unaware yes. of current events. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. I introduced you to a cyber yeah. talk about an hour ago. Yeah, Fuck yeah dude. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so this movie David Lynch did all by himself. It took him five years. And um, it was in 19, it took from 1975 to 79, mm -hmm. I think, 78. I don't know. I might be recalling sure. wrong. But anyway, so it's just, I use like David Lynch or, you know, and a lot of myself just to like uh, as motivation to do it myself because I feel like if it's not done by myself, then yeah. I don't know. Like I have this friend from high school. Uh, his name's Rich. He actually plays in this band, the what's it called? The Slambovian. I forget what they're called. Okay. <laughs> anyway, no, but they're like a well known band. Okay. Um, his name's Rich McCarty. But anyway. Really cool dude. And when I was messaging him, I was like, hey, how can I grow my fan base? And then he made that point of like, are you trying to grow your fan base or are you trying to make music? Like, are you making music? Mm -hmm. because, is your music like coming from you or are you just trying to like, mm -hmm. you know, get attention type thing? And it kind of like made me, you know, sit back and realize like, yeah, you need to make the art that you want to make. Mm -hmm. um, not something that you think is going to appeal to people. But at the same time, I try to at least be put an objective view of like yeah. what people wouldn't like rather than what they would like. So mm -hmm. try to keep out things people wouldn't like 
rather than put in things people would like. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. There has to be some awareness of the audience. I think any, uh, my dad uh, is a big fan of rhetoric and teaches rhetoric, which is like the art of arguing, uh, which is a, a <laughs> fascinating like science to me. Yeah. Uh, but one of the, there's like three main components in there. And one of them is the audience of like, whatever you're saying has to consider the audience. Cause if you don't, then you're missing out part of how you can sell this thing. And so for sure you have to, yes, be aware of it. But I think as an artist, it's like, uh, yes, if my goal is sell the most records then I have to be more aware of it. But I think if our goal is to be true to ourselves and express ourselves and like, I want to be aware of what the audience is thinking. And if everyone is telling me the thing I'm doing is the worst thing they've ever heard and like, okay, maybe there's a right in the masses, yeah. but that's not what most people say. Most people are going to see things and, be pretty neutral on them. I think most people are pretty, pretty neutralized existence. Sorry. <laughs> no, hey, I will never turn down a good pun. <laughs> that was right on the money there. Um, but yeah, I think it is like our job to just be true to what we want and to build the things that we want to make. And if that works, great. If it doesn't, not my problem. <laughs> yeah, I definitely agree. Um, shit, I was gonna say something. Totally forgot. Um, it's there. I can feel it. I don't know, dude. It's up to your tongue. I forgot. <laughs> no, it's just at all, my man. I'm trying to remember what we were talking about as well and see if I can spark your spark your memory, but I don't have a good idea either. Um, well, hey, dude, we're just hanging out, you know? We're just vibes. talking. That is the goal here. <laughs> um, what else I got in my little thing? Um, oh, uh, the studio. Uh, yeah. I want to shout out the studio for one second. Uh, Otherworld Recording. It yeah. looks gorgeous, and I've liked seeing like all this behind-the-scenes stuff that you've been posting from there as well. Fuck I think yeah. It's all done by Alex. He's a fucking genius. Incredible. I love you, dude. <laughs> Incredible, yeah. Talk to me about recording in the studio versus, I assume when you're recording at home, it's more... I don't record anything at home. Interesting. You're not into GarageBand or some very basic recording system? Um, So when I'm writing piano or synth parts, Mm -hmm. yes. But when it comes to like, I don't record drums because, I mean, me and Alex, we use like fucking 12 or 13 microphones on the drum set. And it's just nothing compares to that. You know what Mm -hmm. I mean? Like multiple mics for your bass and your snare drum. That's just like, I don't know. So... I just, like, there's been times where I've, like, done shitty recordings and sent it to him, but sometimes it's so hard to understand that it's better to just save the idea and work as much as I can on that idea. And then we can only usually meet on Saturdays or Sundays because, you know, he's got a full daytime job and shit. And so usually I'll write throughout the entire week um, and then bring it to him. And, yeah, as of late, like, he's been coming up with ideas as well. Um, but yeah, dude, writing in the studio is usually I write and then bring it in the studio. And yeah, as of late, since he's been pitching in, then we've been writing in the studio and he pushes me a lot, which is good because, and then also keeps me accountable. Like if something doesn't come out right, he'll be like, dude, what? (laughs) (laughs) Yes. And you know, I need that as well because again, doing it yourself, there's so many ideas that I either want or feel like need to be in it. That maybe they don't, or like a big thing is because I'm, you know, mainly a drummer, I go fucking ridiculous <laughs> with the drum parts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, he's been teaching me as of late is just like, you know, keep it simple. Not like simple, simple, yeah. but like simple for me, which stay is like. Stay in the pocket is yeah. the term that I barely understand, but I think is the so one stay that applies in the here. Pocket, yeah. You know, being a drum teacher, I guess well, the way I would define that is just staying on beat and make mm-hmm. sure that you have a consistent thing that people can follow. Yeah. Um, Not being too flashy to distract exactly. from everything else. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like, for example, um, Two from Sleep Token does a lot. And, you know, yeah. sometimes I'll take inspiration from that. And then also with Joey Jordison from mm-hmm. Slipknot. He did a lot as well. I mean, yeah. some of the records don't even, weren't even recorded with a metronome. So he's just fucking, they're going off at him. Yes. Uh, Knocked Loose also doesn't use a metronome, which I know is a little really? bit different. I didn't yes. even fucking know that. That's one of my, uh, I I believe they don't use it in studio. I know they don't use it live for sure. Oh, I, I love believe that, they don't dude. use it in it studio. It makes sense though, dude, because their, their songs are what, they're yes. just, they're Knocked Loose. That's it's it. also, it's down tempo enough that I think it's less impressive than a sleep token not using a metronome. Like to me, the the intricacies of a sleep token is like... I don't know how you would do that without a click. It seems impossible. It seems impossible to keep time. Well, have you ever read? All, but dude, like, have you ever seen any of their drum charts? I've watched playthroughs or covers of them, and you, it's just like it's you, mind-numbing. Yeah. If you read the tablature for the music, it's just crazy, dude. He switches <laughs> time signatures yeah. sometimes. Like, there's this one song. It's either the summoning or like that, where he changes time signatures like six times within the first minute. Yeah. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> and there's also some of them that are just in 4 4, which also blew my mind. Yeah, like, exactly. It, it took me so long to like hear the four beats. And it was one of those things I heard someone say, and it was like, 
I know you're right. I know you're a smarter musician than I am, so you are accurate. But there's no way that this is in the four four that I yeah. am. Yeah, barely, basically aware. Because of. he's changing up the feel and mm-hmm. like he's keeping the four four, but just in a different way. I than think they that explained that it was dotted ba- quarter notes that was yeah. throwing me off, and I, I, yeah, I understand mathematically what that is, and sonically, I can't quite pick it up. But I well, like the end of that song. Have you ever heard the night does not belong to God? Yes. Yeah. How it's like. Ch- 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 yeah. Ch- yeah. So that's kind of like an offbeat thing that it is on time. It doesn't sound like it does to most yeah. people. Yeah. Yeah. It's fascinating to watch it all unfold and it's yeah, mind numbing to me. He's to try honestly to track it all. which is which which is crazy because until I saw like Sleep Tokens drummer, I really like wasn't taking a lot of inspiration from other people. Mm-hmm. Like I was still using Thomas Pridgen and Joey Jordison and like, you know, my and then John Bonham, and then I would also say Buddy Rich. Like those mm-hmm. are like my main inspirations. Sure. But once I saw him drum and I heard the music, I was just so fucking fascinated. And then it just so happened that they came out with that long ass drum heel video. And I was mm-hmm. like, fuck yeah. Dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, but it's crazy to think like I kind of stunted my own growth by not looking at other artists. And then when I started to look at, you know, his playing and take inspiration from that, I started to see like an actual difference, you know? That is my one fear about not being a movie person is that like I, I think that like, if there is a Michael Jordan of filmmaking, they're in Hollywood. Like they're yeah, it's not called David the, Lynch. No. <laughs> they're not in the music video world, most likely. And I think that's my one. I try to watch movies. I've been trying to force myself. You mentioned Inglorious Bas- in Bastards. That is one I watched in the last month for the first time. It's just like great. I just w- opened up whatever Amazon Prime and said, uh, whichever one of these movies I've heard of, I'm going to click on it and watch that one because I it's, yeah just you wanted to do it. Just try you try to, to enrich myself yeah. in this. Yeah, and I think that's my one fear of like I think I would do better, and I think there's other places I draw inspiration from. But yeah. To me, it's like I, I just don't. It's just not in me, and to some degree, if I if I need to force it, it's not worth doing. But there is. I mean, in a way, you make movies, dude. To some degree, but I think I think music videos are movies because you're telling a story visually. Sure, and I think that similar to the way that you said Sleep Token inspired you to write more drum ideas, it allowed you to take in more ideas. I think if I could, yeah, buy into. Uh, movies a little bit more than I probably would start deriving of like, yeah, let's make this scene. Yeah. But uh, normally it's people come to me and say, oh, I watched this show. Can we do something like this? And I go and watch three minutes of that show on YouTube and go copy. Okay. Yeah. I understand what we're trying to do and run from there. Um, but yeah, this idea of inspiration is always a fascinating one of like, my ideas have to come from somewhere. Yeah. And I, I try to be very aware of the content I consume because I know it comes back out of me. So I don't do that, which, which I probably should. Yeah. It's like, you know, I'll listen to things and then not realize I listened to it mm-hmm. and then like write something and realize it was from something. And I'm like, what the fuck? It happens all the time. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, but that's, you know, that's the danger of having to do everything yourself. I yep. mean, you know, it's nice because Alex is like a fucking computer. He remembers everything. <laughs> it's awesome. And so, like, if he hears a riff and it's similar to anything, you know, he'll definitely point it out. Um, That rules. Yeah. Nice to have a little yin and yang balance there. Oh, yeah, dude. We couldn't be more opposite. Like, he has, I think, one tattoo. Um, (laughs) You've only got about one. Yeah, I have one. They just connect. (laughs) No, but he's like, you know, he's like a responsible adult, like married. I'm fucking 27 and I live in my parents' basement. Hell yes. (laughs) Uh, point being is like, uh, he also like helps me, uh, stay in the real world, I Mm -hmm. guess. Like, you know, I don't know. I think that's one thing that I love about music videos is that like, I have a deadline normally. And he does music videos too. Like he does the same exact thing you do just without a podcast. You know, he does music videos and all this stuff, different shit. Yeah. Yeah. That rules. I'll have to get him on here sometime. But yeah, I think one thing I love about music videos is that I usually have a deadline and that prevents me from getting into all this artistic mess that I think bands normally get into of like, what if, what if, what if? And to me, it's like, there can be no what if because it's due Friday. So yeah, there's, there's got to be a cap. Of how of how like good I can d- I make it? And yeah. to me, that's very freeing of like, it It allows me to sink all my energy into this thing and know that I'm not going to do that forever. Whereas I think with with songwriting, with being in the studio, there's this, yeah, fear of like, you just get in there and just keep working on the same song for six years. And it's like, probably it could have come out after 18 months and you could have moved on to the song number two and yeah. it would have been better in the long run. And it's like, I, I appreciate that desire for perfection, but I recognize that it isn't the optimal way to, to grow. And again, in this, we started this conversation talking about how quickly we learn and grow new things. And it's like, if I work on a song for six years, there's no time for me to grow. If yeah. I do a song every year, then there is a progression that I can grow and I will keep progressing with that. Yeah. Um, That's a problem I was running into recently because yeah. I was writing so many guitar and bass parts mm-hmm. that <laughs> he ended up pointing out like, dude, we have like 17 songs mm-hmm. of like guitar yeah. And we don't, like, some of them are half finished. And so then I just realized that, like, 
I have to start creating these songs like as the songs mm -hmm. and you know what I mean? Yes. And cuz yeah. I had this whole idea of this album and it having it one theme and it's sure. still like that, but it's also um you can't create 12 songs at once. Yeah, I got to yeah. and I was trying to, you know yeah. what I mean? And so yeah. like that's why we basically just did some demo drums for those newer songs. But yeah, like I said, the focus is the EP right now, which I just um yeah, just announced here. <laughs> Hell yes, dude. <laughs> but um we are coming up on our hour. Is there anything we want to promote about the EP? Is there oh, I'm sorry, dude. Coming, no worries at all, man. I'm happy to keep chatting. Uh, but yes, as we are getting getting moving towards wrapping up at some point. Uh, yes, anything we want to promote? Anything from the album? Like, is the, you mentioned the new EP. Is there just a time we want to say it's coming out? Is there anything we want to yeah let people know about in the future of Neutralized Existence? Or are we? Well, yeah, like I said, this Saturday I'm do, redoing the two last things we need, which is just the bass, and Hell then yeah. you know I obviously let. You know, he's got to, he does it on his own time. And sure. like, you know, I just appreciate everything he does for me. So let him kind of do whatever he's got to do. Let the man cook. <laughs> yeah. So I don't like saying release dates because that's fair. what I did with the Dead Forget You Quickly. And I felt like I kind of pushed that on him. And so that's yeah. the thing that when it, if it was me, it would be different. But it's like, you know, he does so much that I would, yeah, I just don't do release dates, which sucks. But it's also like, um, why put pressure on it? You yep. know what I mean? Yep. But yeah, so the bass will be done on Saturday. And so expect to have, I mean, two of the songs are already done. It's just, we decided we're just going to release the EP rather than, you know, mm -hmm. the songs. Um, but yeah, so once I finish those two other songs, then it'll be uh, probably in the next month or two. And then Seeds just has to have vocals recorded. And then that should be out in like, yeah, the next month or two. And those are the two like soonest things that will be coming out. Hell yes. And I'll yeah. links all the current stuff in the yeah. bio and all. If you can follow and, you know, sub subscribe to all the different shit that I'm on. Yeah. All the <laughs> dumb words that I yeah. hate saying, but yes, they are Facebook, Instagram, important. YouTube, yes. all those things. It's all neutralized existence everywhere, correct? Yes. And then Billy Smith drums, I believe, is the yeah, other, yeah. other so avenue here. Billy Smith drums is like my, you know, drumming teacher thing. That's mm -hmm. like, and then Neutralized Existence is, yeah, the solo project. I don't usually, uh, you know, let my students know about my solo projects just because the themes I cover a lot. <laughs> Not always student appropriate. Yeah, no. <laughs> I feel that. 100%. Uh, one thing I like to wrap up on here and try and get to the bottom of, like, we talked a lot about all the music stuff, all the drums, the guitars, all the instrumental side of stuff. Uh, what else are you interested in? Are you playing video games? Are you a hiker? Are you a climber? Yes. What I else love my like dogs. To? Okay. So I well, how many a, dogs we got? So I have a dog named Dexter, and he is a French bulldog. Okay. And black lab. <laughs> okay. Um, no, he's a pit bull. He's just <laughs> legally a French bulldog. <laughs> got you. <laughs> anyway. Um... And then I have a golden retriever, and his name's Murphy. So it's Dexter and Murphy. Dexter's my dog. Murphy's the family dog, and I just hang out with them a lot. And then if I'm not writing, I am. I watch a lot of movies, and I also, um, I'm also writing like a movie in itself. Like I wrote a, a screenplay. It's okay. about basically how I lost the love of my life, got into drugs. The shit that I went through during that, the mistakes I made, crazy sure. mistakes, and then how I got out of it and how I've stayed out of it. And that's also kind of how the mu what the music's about, but I think the idea is we're going to finish the music first, and then when we make the movie, we can use the music in the movie and kind of make it come full circle. But that's yeah, awesome. I'm also putting working on that screenplay, but I'm pretty dumb, so... That's beautiful. It takes a while. <laughs> Congrats on the sobriety there and that journey. I oh, know it's thank a, a you, turbulent dude. one, so it's awesome to see you... Yeah grown out of that and grown past that so far. Yeah. I know that it's a, a lifelong, lifelong journey, but yeah, I think all we can do is focus on today and make sure that today goes as well as we can. Right. Sounds yeah. like we're doing it today and that's all we can ask Hell for yeah, sometimes. Dude. Uh, the screenplay is a fascinating part of that where like I, it seems like an enormous undertaking. Like, yeah, is this, it sounds like, yeah, you've been a cinephile your whole life, just loving yeah. movies your whole life. Is that where this comes from? Yeah. It also just comes from like, I don't know. Uh, getting personal. It just comes to like the point where I made like so many mistakes and I just want this person to see how I actually feel mm -hmm. through my art. Sure. As dumb as that sounds. And, you know, as like, uh, I don't know if that's even healthy, but at the same point, it's like, yeah, I just, it's like my art is, is the way that I can tell people how I'm feeling or, you know. Yeah, when you can't communicate with somebody in one way, communicate in a different way, I sure. guess. And it's just like, uh, 
yeah, stuff that I've never been able to get over is what this shit is about. Um, because of all my drug use, I fucking fucked up on the like greatest things ever. And I've just never kind of gotten over it. And that's sure. like, yeah, what the whole screenplay is about is about how even if you do get sober, all the shit that you dealt with or all the stuff that made you use is still going to be there. Mm-hmm. And so that's also something yes. what it's about, which is like, Dealing with the emotions that you felt like you need to escape from and stuff like that. I've heard people describe that, that, yeah, getting sober is almost easier than facing all the other Hell stuff yeah. that kept you Because not then sober. that's what's going to take yeah. you back out is if yeah. you fall back into that negative or depressive mindset or anything like that, and you know? Do you th- see yourself acting in this screenplay? Do you see yourself as a writer or are you... No, you- yeah, I'm probably gonna, it's probably going to be me. I did have an actress in the role of, like, the main girl, but... Mm-hmm. That did not work out. And so I kind of am just not focusing on actors or actresses for that thing right now because sure. everything is about the music. Mm-hmm. But I do put, like, anytime I think something will go good with that, I'll go and put a little more work into it. And it started out as, like, a full movie, but then Alex was like, we should make a short film. Mm-hmm. And so it's probably going to be, like, 30 minutes long. It was originally, I wrote, like, an hour and a half to two-hour thing, and wow. I had to cut it down. How many pages is that? It was, like... Hundreds, a right? hundred yeah. and se- hundred sixty, a hundred seventy, something I like that. Did Each page sh- is like a minute. Each page is like a minute. Yeah, I did a short film and it never ended up getting completed. It's yeah, kind of died. It's not in like limbo. that. It was all good, oh. but <laughs> <laughs> as anything we do is, yeah, it takes some time to whittle down. But yeah, I can relate to that struggle of yeah, producing a film was a an enormous challenge that I went through, and yeah, I never got never say a lot of day de- saw the light of day. That's one thing that always bummed me out. But it just yeah, it was out of my hands at a certain point. Um, but yeah, that's an interesting, interesting venture to be getting into. Yeah. Uh, movie you saw most recently that I should watch. What, what, what's something you saw recently? What's something? Yeah. Put me on to something good here. (laughs) Learn me something about someone. Yeah. Let me, let me think something that I watched recently that was good. I mean, TV show wise fucking fallout. I don't know if you, I know of it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. One of the, I like, as sad as this is, I found out through like the whole like, so my old friend from Cosmic Bond Destroyer, he used to play three and four, like Fallout three and four. And I didn't know anything about the universe. Mm-hmm. I watched the TV show, got super into it. Then uh, one of my friends bought me Fallout four. So I've just been playing that. Hell yeah. And um, so I'd definitely say TV show wise, fucking Fallout. Okay. Um, is that the first season out? How many seasons? Yeah, out? it's just the first season. Okay, that's digestible. Out. And then the boy. <laughs> I need to watch Game of Thrones, but oh, I'm just like, I yeah. can't. Like, it's just too much for me to sign on. Yeah, and then the boys on Amazon. Mm-hmm. I just like literally before I got here, I was just watching the fourth season came out yesterday. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So I started watching that today, and that's fucking awesome. But movie wise, definitely check out Eraserhead, dude, or check out okay. the new Dunes. Okay. Or, I mean, there's this one movie that's kind of obscure called Upgrade, and that okay. movie is really sick. We were talking about Cybertrucks before we got on here. That has a thing like that. Okay. Where you tell the car where to go, and it goes. I don't know. It's a cool movie, too. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I want to go to the boys for one second, because it's a perfect example to me of, like, I think part... I, I didn't grow up as a movie kid. Like, it just wasn't my, my favorite Neither thing. Neither did I. I grew up... I, like, uh, got into it my... Like, my issue is that now I feel like I know how the sausage is made. So watching <laughs> uh, movies, I see all the cuts. I see all the people who were off camera, all yeah. the boom mics that were overhead. And The Boys is a perfect example of that because I watched the first episode of it. Uh, and there's, I'm not going to spoil it for anyone, but in that first episode, there's a pretty shocking uh, assault, Dude, for lack of a better f- term. It's the first episode. Um, we can it spoil is. it. Yes. Um, <laughs> It happens. I also, yeah, don't really want to get into the words. Oh, oh okay, there, okay, yes. okay, yeah, yeah. Um, but anywho, yes, there's a, a pretty shocking event. But it was like two minutes into the episode, I saw that coming. And it wasn't that they foreshadowed it. It was that I saw them setting up a world and it was like, okay, they have to break this world. Where does it go? And like, I felt like if I could you, like, yeah. put the pieces together in such a way that it ruined the thing. And then when the thing happened, I was like, I one knew it was going to happen, and now it feels extra gross. Because instead of being surprising, it feels like they You've built led up to this. it. Yeah, and it's like, oh, I don't want to show that built. And of course, they did it to everyone else. They built a superhero world, and there's horror inside of it, and that draws well, you in. See, the thing about that is, it was a comic book before. Okay, yeah. yeah so yeah. all the stuff that's in the show was mm-hmm. in the comic book. Gotcha. Believe it or not, okay. actually, some of the comic is worse. I'm not gonna I lie bet. to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Usually that's the case. Yeah. And so I was surprised when they even kept a lot of the stuff that they kept in there. Yeah. You know what I mean? But like, yeah. It's yeah, it's been tough for me, and I think as I watch movies, I have a similar challenge. Like I'm too aware that someone was at a keyboard. Oh, I typing knew how the they words. lit that. I knew how they did that. That guy's looking that way. You know that. <laughs> and type there's of so shit. many like over the shoulder shots where my 
jaw is moving. We're looking at you. We're not supposed to see that my yeah, jaw is yeah. moving. But <laughs> all those little things that creep up in me. It's like I, I just ruin the illusion for myself. And instead of, I end up like an hour into a movie going like, I don't know what's happening. I know what because lighting they used. Because you've been paying attention. I know how many cuts there were. I know where the sound guy was sitting. Like I, I can imagine who wrote this and why they wrote it. That sounds, I don't know who the main character that is. That sounds like a blessing and a terrible curse, It's dude. bizarre. Yes. Yeah. It feels like I'm watching a play. It's the only way I can use an analogy. Yeah, like, because I you can like see, see all the people moving the shit yes. around, even though yeah. they're not there. Yeah. Yes. That's and sick, dude. It's it's fascinating. That's, yeah, but that is fascinating, not sick. It, That's not a good thing. Uh, it is. I think it is, yeah, maybe cool to someone who isn't in my world. To yeah. me, it's, you're right. It's a blessing and a curse of like, it's, it's interesting to how all this is made, but yes, it is. It's impossible for like I feel like advertising no longer works on me because like I just I see a billboard and I'm like oh I I know where you took that photo yeah <laughs> like I know there's a person like I know someone typed that and they went through ten rounds of revisions of what the font and the color should be and it's like have you ever seen They Live I don't know if I have okay is um, that one I should look into yes okay it's by John Carpenter the reason I brought that up is because you said advertisements mm-hmm. and billboards yeah have you ever heard of this gate company Obey. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. So they took <laughs> finally their, something I know. Well, they took that idea from this movie because okay. some of the advertisements, when you put these glasses on, then it says like obey or consume gotcha. or like yeah, yeah, yeah. all these different like how like advertisements like what they're actually trying to say type deal. Yep. yep. But yeah, that's a good movie too. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, I got some homework to do tonight. Yeah. I'll look into it. Hell yeah, my man. We did it. Episode 69 with Billy Smith is complete. Hell yeah, dude. 69. <laughs> Hell yes, my man. Uh, p- just before we get out of here, yes. Links for neutral existence, neutralized existence will be in the description. Uh, neutralized existence on all social medias. Billy Smith drums on social medias. Uh, anything else we need to promote? Anything to let people know about before? Uh, my on? partner is Alex Daranowski at Other World Recordings. Check him out. He is fucking the best in the game. Hell yes. You know. Studio looks so sick. Yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's an awesome one to plug. Yes, please, as we were talking about all the shitty stuff that does help, please do leave a like or comment if yeah. you made it this far. Um, if you didn't make this far, have a beautiful day. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> awesome, man. Thanks for coming Thank through. Thank you for listening. Mission or watching. accomplished. Yes.